How is it going, everybody? I want to introduce Ray Palma today from Ray Counting Solutions. How are you doing today, Ray? I'm doing great. Thanks, John, for inter uh, I mean, inviting me here in your <laughs> You're very well interview. You're very welcome. It's been uh, great. I think uh, we were talking about earlier, I think we first met on LinkedIn, and then uh, I've seen you everywhere on social media promoting your business. So I appreciate you making the time to talk with us today. So you are the owner of an accounting uh, business here in the Philippines, but I want to start off by going back a little bit in time. When you were growing up, what did you think you wanted to do when you grew up? Well, that's uh, um, when I was still young, I was already an ambitious person. So I wanted to become really rich, but I mm -hmm. didn't know how to be one, like, you know. Sure. And then when I, but when I was studying, I was really focused on um, being top, one of the top um, students in the class. So that's what I focused on. So I didn't sure. focus on, you know, um, what will I do after school, after, you mm -hmm. know, graduating. So my focus is really to study. So I, I didn't understand. had any idea what's to come in the real world. You know, as they say, when you sure. graduate, it will be different from, you know, studying than working. Of course, of course. So how did you decide what to do in college? So in college, I really wanted, uh, my parents wanted me to become a accountant, of course, because yeah. I was a lady. I was a girl, and but I wanted to become an engineer <laughs> because nice. it sounds cool. And mm. yeah, and I am really um, good with math, I believe, <laughs> because they tell me also that I'm good with that. And yeah, um, as also they say that if you are good in math, you can be also good in accounting, which is not true. So <laughs> in accounting, it's really simple, um, math, math, math um, complications. And yeah, and then I had choices. So I didn't expect that the choices I will be making will have an impact after graduation, because mm -hmm. yeah, you will have you have to use it after you graduate. But it's not required. I mean, if you want to succeed, anything that you want to do, um, you can do it. Yeah, of so course. So at that time, uh, after high school, thinking of going to college, you wanted to take an engineering degree, but your parents wanted you to take an accounting degree. And it sounds like your parents' wishes is what you ultimately did. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I understand. And then during college, and you know, we know that you have an accounting business now, uh, but did you decide, well, I'm not going to be an engineer. I'm going to do what my parents want and be an accountant, did you plan on working for another company or did you immediately have the idea to start your own business? Yeah, so um, while I was studying in college, um, just a quick background on why I still pursued accounting, even though that I wanted to become an engineer. So mm -hmm. with that, um, while studying accounting, I learned how, I mean, to love it. And yeah, it's really interesting since you you'll be working with numbers like speaking with numbers and then in business you are also important part of the business since you have you can tell a story through numbers so that's what i mm -hmm. i felt how i fell in love with accounting and then after that after graduating um my goal was to become an employee you know mm -hmm. um to gain experience of course that's what um most people do after graduating sure. to gain and, experience. Because right. And really what year scary. did you graduate as well? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Ray. Just uh, curious, what uh, year did you graduate? Um, 2018. 2018. Okay. So about four years ago now. Uh, yes. So you planned on getting a job at a bigger uh, company. And then did that happen? Did you wind up working for another company? Yes. I, um, I was able to be hired here in our um, province. Mm -hmm. Yeah as an accounting assistant. So I started um, like the low, lowest uh, mm -hmm. position in the finance department. And okay. then yeah, it's really hard to work 
with a company that you cannot know. I mean, you don't know the goal except for profit, you know, <laughs> just making sure. them rich. So sure. that's where, that's where I realized, oh, um, it, I, because you don't feel valued, you don't feel important because they often say that you can be replaced your, you know, so they don't give importance. And that's what I want to change, you mm-hmm. know, especially for accountants and bookkeepers. Um, if you compare the work, I mean, the other professionals, like the engineers, doctors, they have higher you know, salary compared to us. We are, we are also giving value to businesses. We are making them, you know, um, right. profitable, yeah, successful if they can leverage their finances. So, yeah. yeah, that's where I think we can, you know, um, leverage our value to the businesses that we will be serving. Absolutely. So I think that sometimes business owners don't always make the best employees. Sometimes they do, of course. But yeah. do you find that there was value in having been an employee before starting your own business? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so, so would you recommend to somebody straight out of college starting a business or do you think that you would tell them it doesn't hurt to work for a while for another company? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that, um, I think it's, it really depends because um, of your, it really depends on your goal. Because I think um, if you, if I didn't experience becoming an employee, I wouldn't, you know, realize that, you know, being an entrepreneur is also important. Like, sure, I wouldn't sure. feel the, you know, the urge to pursue the business side, like owning a business if I didn't experience it. So I think if, you know, it, it really depends upon the situation the person is in. So mm-hmm. if a person is already, I mean, have already knowledge in business, they can straightly pursue having a business even though they don't have, but they are seeing other person pursue it. So it really depends on the, no focus. Mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> I don't have a straight answer. <laughs> for sure, that one. So I understand. Sometimes there's not a one size fits all answer. Yeah. How long did you work for that company before you started to feel maybe I'll start my own business? Um, it's been almost uh, more than one year, and okay. then so pandemic came. Yeah, right. pandemic came, and that's when. Yeah, I we didn't feel the value as an employee because they didn't support us while you know during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were we were not paid because we didn't work. Of course, there's no work. So right. yeah, that's where we got stuck. And I need to move because my plan before the pandemic was to become an OFW. Mm-hmm. I've already prepared. I book a flight. And I was gonna resign on that company, and then pandemic came, and then the plans, you know, <laughs> evaporated. Like sure, in sure. And, I understand. Yeah. So for, for those of yours, those of you uh, watching outside of the Philippines, uh, OFWs here are Filipinos that uh, are working overseas, and that's very popular here. There's there's really mm-hmm. a very large percentage of the population that winds up working overseas some somewhere really to make higher income as well so yeah. it was no work no pay and was that the main catalyst for you deciding to start your own business or were there other factors as well um yeah after that um i mean that uh experience the pandemic and i still uh, i'm not you know I mean, focused on creating my own business. I was just looking for a job, yeah, Mm -hmm. to have, to earn, you know, Mm -hmm. to have, make money, to have savings. That's what I was focusing on. But I didn't expect that along the way in the freelancing, yeah, because of the pandemic, I learned about freelancing. And then during freelancing, I learned about business. So it's like uh, progress (laughs) step by step. Sure, sure. I understand. Uh, So what do you think was the final thing that made you you decide, I'm not going to go work for somebody else. I'm going to start my own business. Um, When I was able to experience, 
multiple clients, handling multiple clients. Okay. And yeah, I I didn't know that you can do that in freelancing. I didn't know even know what freelancing was sure. in online. Yeah. So I was really I don't know if I call it ignorant me ignorant in the online world because I thought online was a scam <laughs> in the sure. first place. And then, yeah, after experiencing my first client and then adding a second client and then third and then fourth, that's where I um, I realized that I was running already a business. <laughs> right. And then, so, so, so you started off uh, from having kind of no work, no pay here in the Philippines as an accountant because of the pandemic to deciding that you're going to find some clients to work with online. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? How did yeah. you do that? Uh, so you didn't know a lot about, you know, finding clients online. Uh, how did you go from having no knowledge to kind of figuring out how to start freelancing with individual mm -hmm. clients and then multiple clients online? Yeah. So with that, um, there's a background to that. Uh, while um, the first few months, like first two months of the pandemic, I was um, like every day I was Netflix and chilling. <laughs> like every right, day right. because I was giving myself like, a, you know, a time to rest because of the stress working in a company and also helping my mom with her business, um, food business, like making yep. lecture plan you know the delicacies here in the in the right. philippines mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um why not i i asked myself is this i mean is this that is this where i will stop like um doing things um mm -hmm. stop um pursuing my dreams because of the pandemic because i am not able to um go to uh the Sing Singapore because that's my plan before going sure. to Singapore and becoming a OFW overseas Filipino worker. Mm -hmm. And then I questioned myself that, and when you question yourself, that's where you will be finding answers. So I turned to in the internet and then Facebook and then I search for jobs, and then there's the online jobs. And then there's the freelancing, <laughs> like sure. the, you know, the step-by-step -step, um, gaining of knowledge, like mm -hmm. you'll see some information, but it's really overload. You will be overloaded with information, but you have to select what you, you know, what you can, um, I mean, what you can uh, gain mm -hmm. in a short time. And I tried applying, um, and then after applying, I, I've been interviewed and mm -hmm. also in online jobs, that, that's where I got my first client. And I also invested my savings going to Singapore in buying a laptop. So I think right. that's an opportunity for me also because I know that a lot of um, Filipinos want to also pursue online work, working yeah. from home. And they don't have like the capacity to buy a laptop. Mm -hmm. So that's, I am grateful also because I have um, a savings at that time. And yeah, and that's where I said to myself that there's no turning back. I already invested um, something to this, uh, like, I mean, to this part, the online, working online. So that's when I didn't stop um, consistently applying and then mm -hmm. searching for jobs. And after I I received the laptop because it was sent um by you know by the courier right now there's a lot of delivery. Yeah, <laughs> like the right. Shopee Lazada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after that. And then did you know that after I received the laptop, uh the first client of mine mm -hmm. uh messaged me and it was quickly ROI return on investment. I didn't expect That's that. Correct. Yeah. That's then amazing. The amount, the amount that I um, uh, paid for the uh, laptop uh, mm -hmm. instantly returned. <laughs> that, that's very yeah. exciting. So what did that feel like for you before you said you felt somewhat undervalued 
working as an employee at the company where you were at. And then all of a sudden you had your first client and you were able to pay off your laptop and, uh, you know, look towards making more profits. What was that feeling of going from employee to freelancer at that time? What was that well, like at, at first, it was really scary because mm -hmm. my family is also scaring me because they thought like, yeah, like me, online was a scam. Like they wouldn't pay mm -hmm. you. They just use you and right. don't trust them. And yeah, maybe you will be scammed because there's a lot of scam right now that you need to pay first before you work. And, you know, paying right. first before you work is already a scam. You don't yes. have to pay anything. Um, yeah, that's what they've been telling me. And me, I kept on trusting because others are producing results. Like they are earning from online. So why not me? I yes. told that to myself. And then mm -hmm. after receiving the, you know, the, the income, I, I call it income, not the salary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Business mindset. After yeah. receiving the income of my first client, from my first client, I felt um, really, really grateful mm. because I can, um, I can show it to my family that it, it's not a scam. So, and then yes. after um, having my family know that, they supported me <laughs> that's great. and yeah that's when i didn't stop um i joined a lot of groups community in facebook of freelancers and then learn from them yeah it's really nice to have a community where you help each other you know if you have struggles because it's um different from working physically in an office and then mm -hmm. working online because yeah. you're just alone talking to a computer <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So when did it start to feel like you went from one, two, three, four, you know, new clients to, you know, not just simply being a freelancer, but really transitioning to owning your own business? Um, actually, with regards to um, owning a business, I think I started right, even though I didn't know that I'm already running a business because mm -hmm. I was focused on building my brand, building... Mm -hmm you know, a story of my own and then, you know, being active in social media because that's how you will be promoting your business online, right? Through social media, emails, um, yeah, something like this. Right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I've become active there and I didn't know why I'm so active because I just wanted to show up, always show up and then just become, you know, um, present. To, to let them, like the um, pr prospective clients, to know me as a person also because you are going to, they are going to trust you, especially you will be handling our financial information. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's where um, step by step I'm gaining insight. And then after that, after having multiple clients, that's when I started, oh, I'm running a business now. So I have to, strategize to get more <laughs> and then to build a team i understand so tell me are you the uh sole owner of the company or is do you have any partners so currently after being registered in the us so a uh, uh, investor helped me that um so that investor i've also worked with her before mm -hmm. as a marketing so as a marketing person it's really um, ironic, right? Um, because I, my first full-time job in online was a marketing assistant position. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to work as a bookkeeper or accountant. But mm -hmm. I think it's also an advantage for me since I gained um, insights in, in the marketing of business. Yeah. So that's, um, I'm really thankful for her because she is she will trust me with this one and yeah so i have a partner she's I, from us and she helped me register the business in us very good very good uh, so is the business also registered here in the philippines or is it solely us based solely us based very very interesting uh so what about in the philippines do you have employees working with you now mm -hmm. yes 
All right. Um, so tell me more about your team. So my team, my team is just um I've trained them personally. So mm-hmm. I'm also teaching my uh, siblings, my cousin, uh, my siblings' friends. So mm-hmm. and I will be continuing on hiring um people from our province because I also want to introduce here. I know that a lot of um people in the the I mean the central part of the Philippines and CR. National mm-hmm. Capital Region of the Philippines is already um, pursuing freelancing. So I think here in our place, it's still not that you know um, known. Like they still have that mindset of uh, working online. Like if you work online, you're just working as a call center agent, something like that. Sure, so, sure, I understand. Yeah. So what would you say to other Filipinos that are thinking about, should I be an employee? Should I be a freelancer? Should I start my own business? Uh, what type of advice would you give them to consider? Mm-hmm. So this is not an advice. It's just um, questioning yourself. So okay. what will I ask them is, what is your goal? And is what you are doing right now Um contributing to your goal so mm-hmm. yeah i i think that's really important also to um have yourself question mm-hmm. question yourself and then answer it honestly because we don't know what's their goal and even if we are advising them to pursue business if it's not really their goal then I think it wouldn't work. <laughs> yes, yes. So business, yeah. uh, I think you would say, isn't necessarily for everyone, but everyone. something that everybody could consider and see if it makes sense for them. Mm-hmm. So do you think uh, that it's it's helpful to start off as a freelancer so you could see how you feel about working with other business owners or other people out there? Did you Did you find that experience helpful? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I I believe that every experience that is happening to our life will contribute to what we will be in the future. So you you just let yourself experience what you want to experience, and then um, decide whether to pursue it or not. Mm-hmm. Because yet, yeah, um, even though that there are others like especially younger than you, uh, already mm-hmm. successful remember that life is not a race and you have your time to shine also and yeah we are all different that's what we that's um what's beautiful about us as humans that we are different even though we have similarities but overall we are different we have different situations background and Mm -hmm. i think that's our strength also of becoming different and you can use that as an opportunity to pursue whatever goal you have, whether in, it's in business or becoming a very valuable employee in freelancing. Mm-hmm. Because right now, I think the, the working environment is turning mm-hmm. global. So in the mm-hmm. future, everyone will be working together in other countries. So um, if you are already pursuing online work or freelancing, you have the advantage and true yeah you continue continue taking that advantage that opportunity because this will be the future Mm -hmm. makes sense so when you grew up you said you really weren't thinking too much about what you wanted to do for work you were really focused on your studies then you wanted to become an engineer but ultimately wound up taking an accounting degree how did you learn to run a business because even though you have an accounting business and you know accounting, there's so many other things that it takes to run a business. How'd you, how'd you learn those extra skills? Also oh, for those extra skills, I think um, yeah, joining, um, communicating, joining to a community that is, has the, the business mindset, the mm-hmm. right mindset in running a business and then learning from them, consuming a lot of things, and then applying it, experiencing those um, strategies. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, that's where you will be, be step by step, you'll learn running a business. I think we all have that um, kind of um, feeling like 
um, having a business mindset if we choose it. So, mm. yeah. So that's where I learned how to run. But there, it's really not perfect. I must say, you'll have you'll commit a lot of mistakes, like mm. um, losing clients. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, there will be a good um, results and also bad results. So you should expect that. And running a business means working a lot. <laughs> yeah. Unlike being an employee, which I saw your TikTok video. It's really exactly what it is. <laughs> like you're still working even though um, others are already sleeping. And that's where I was also um, shocked about business because you have to work all the time, <laughs> even yeah. weekends. Yes. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. Yeah, I think that there's so many uh, misconceptions that people have about what it takes to uh, own your own business. And I think one of the biggest ones is that people think that if you're a business owner, you could have your employees do everything for you. But at the end of the day, most business owners are working a lot more hours yeah. uh, than mm-hmm. employees, especially in the early years. But sometimes, uh, you know, I even find these days, you know, I'm still working day shift with our team at Purple Cow. And then at night shift, we have a growing sales team. Uh, calling the U.S. and so I'm up a lot of the night as well. Oh. So I think that's a, you know a good thing to bring up for people considering having a business is that if you don't put in the hard work, and as you mentioned, mm-hmm. if you're not prepared for the good things and the bad things, the successes and failures, you might really be caught unaware. So I think for people yeah. considering business, you really have to be comfortable with facing your fears and dealing with rejection and failure there's nothing wrong with those things it's just kind of part of the job as a business owner right mm-hmm. yep yes yeah, yes that's so true yes yeah. well I that, have... oh yeah. please go ahead <laughs> sorry about that. yeah i just remembered something that they say when you are uh you know a business owner you have the freedom yes you have the freedom Mm-hmm. from other people but you will be luck in the in your goal like luck in <laughs> so true. You, you're pursuing your goal which is also gratifying yes but yeah it's not re- exactly the freedom that people think like being free of your time because you have responsibilities you become more responsible <laughs> with yes. what you are doing and that's that true person Yes, yes. Yeah, for me as a business owner, I wouldn't have it any other way. I really uh, love being able to create something and uh, face the challenges and see it grow. You know, I love seeing employees that we have as well really grow and be able to do what they're best Mm -hmm. at as well. So I really love that side of it. But on the freedom, sometimes that takes a lot more time to have the kind of freedom that I think people will expect where they don't yeah. necessarily have to work as much. Uh, it takes time, uh, especially with some businesses, to make that happen. Yeah. But I've yeah. been very inspired uh, by you and seeing your story uh, here, seeing what you know you share on social media, seeing your business uh, grow. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to share more about yourself with others uh, on my channel as well. There may be some out there that say, I'd love to work with Ray. I need an accountant or I need a bookkeeper. Uh, if there's somebody thinking that, how would they get in contact with you? So they can get in contact with me through my website, recounting.com. Okay. So yeah, they can do that. Or they can um, look me up to LinkedIn, uh, mm-hmm. Facebook. And yeah, that's where... I, uh, I will be around. <laughs> All right. I'll make sure and put those links uh, in the video below. Uh, so it'll be easy for people to uh, reach out to you. And again, want to thank you so much for taking your time uh, today. I know you're busy running your business. Appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for this opportunity to voice out <laughs> my story. And yeah, what you are doing is really great really helpful to a lot of Filipino people and thank you're you. not ju- just changing one person you're changing a lot of people thank yeah. you so much that means a lot to me all right 
Uh, for those watching today, thank you so much for taking the time. And as always, guys, take care. Thank you so much.